Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Trumbull Fertilizers and Chemicals Q4 FY24 Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rishab Parad from CDR India. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good day, everyone, and thank you for joining us on the Chumbal Fertilizers and Chemicals Q4 and FY24 earnings call. We have with us today Mr. Abhay Vajal, Managing Director, Mr. Anand Agarwal, CFO, Mr. Anand Jain, Assistant Vice President Finance, Mr. Tadeep Bharat, Vice President Legal and Company Secretary, and Mr. Ashish Srivastava, Vice President, Sales and Marketing. Before we get started, I would like to point out that some statements made or discussed in the conference call today may be forward-looking in nature and must be viewed in conjunction with the risks the company faces. Chumbal Fertilizers and Chemicals does not undertake to update them. The statement in this regard is available for reference in the presentation. We will begin this call with opening remarks from Mr. Bejal. I would now like to invite Mr. Bejal to share his views. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Risha. And good day to everybody and a warm welcome to all of you participating in this call. We are happy with our financial and operating performance of the quarter and the year ended March 31st, 2024. See, since you would have had the chance to go through the presentation and financial performance shared earlier, I will not spend time restating the numbers in my opening remarks. Our Yulia business continues to perform well, that upon 1 and 2 both underwent plant maintenance shutdown. And in addition, we went to the implementation of the energy saving schemes for both plants 1 and 2, which were successfully implementing and delivering better results than what we thought about. The production of Yulia for the year was 33.83 lakh tons, and it was comparable to the previous year. Subsidy received was 14,480 crores in financial year 24. The reduction in subsidy inflow was basically due to lower gas prices and lower NBS fertilizers. Our tank project is going as per plan. The statutory approvals are all in place. We have spent about 260 crores to March 31st. All orders for long lead items have been placed and construction activities are progressing well. Our focus on crop protection and specialty nutrients continues. We are on track to achieve our 26-27 numbers of 300 crore plus EBITDA. We have a strong pipeline of 12 new products of CPC for FY25 with a focus on BD sites. We have already launched four of these products in the last month. Chamber Fertilizer with this well-entrenched relationships with both leading global innovators and the pharma expense expansive presence and efficient sourcing capability is optimally positioned to be a complete solution and service provider for nutrition and crop protection. In addition, we have now started focusing on biological products. We have already two products in the market, Mycorrhiza and BioNanoP, which was launched last year. Uh, one was launched last year. This year we have launched BioNanoP, which is basically a nanoP developed biologically by action of certain microbes on phosphate rock. This is a completely new type of product uh, as compared to what is available in the market. This is called Uttam Pranam, and this is in collaboration with our research partner, Terry. We are also evaluating two more biological products which are presently under trial under, under our Uttam Santulit Potion Aviar. This is basically where we test out all these products in our own farms, evaluate the results, and then launch the product. In the seed to harvest program, Jumbo Fertilizer continues to make strong progress. In quarter four and FY24, Jumbo Fertilizer took 6,300 farmer meetings, reaching out to 3.5 lakh farmers. We collected 87,000 soil samples, covered 2,941 villages and 700 locations. We continue to explore opportunities to create value as we speak, the board has also proved further energy efficiency uh, projects worth about 120 crores. 
and these will be implemented in time for our annual turnaround to Garapan 1 and 2 plants in 2026. So, uh, keeping this in mind in the challenging macro environment, we are happy with our performance in the just concluded financial year and look forward to doing better in financial year 25. With that, I'll take your question. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Prashant Biani from Ilara Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, first of all, thanks for bifurcating the segment financials into manufactured and complex. It increases the clarity significantly. On the question, sir, uh, what led to decline in, probability, uh, in profitability for Urea business? Okay, Prashad, there are three factors. One is that our sales as compared to last year are down by about 1.8 lakh tons. Hmm. One lakh tons. No, no, sir. For the year, it is 1.8 lakh tons. And uh, in addition, uh, our ammonia business is a little soft this year as compared to last year. Both these two things point <laughs> majorly towards a reduction in the uh, urea contribution. Okay. And, uh, sir, uh, how much was the uh, G1, G2 shutdown related cost? Uh, was it something uh, very material? Uh, the repair and maintenance cost for each of these uh, plants would be you know, 9 to 10 crores. Okay. So, for FY25, uh, what would be the growth drivers uh, segment wise if you can highlight? Uh, I am not uh, the one one segment that we would definitely uh, improve is uh, in India, and that will be the energy efficiency projects which have been put in. So since we have started delivering the work, possibly we have better results than uh, what we thought. There will be some benefits coming out of there. Uh, as far as the uh, complex fertilizers business is concerned, uh, we are trading carefully. Last time also in the previous quarter I told you that it's a portfolio approach. Uh, we have a basket of NPK and DAP. We have already placed about uh, or rather uh, contracted for almost 2 lakh metric tons of material, both MOP, NPKs, and we have also taken some amount of DAP. Going forward, we have to see how to balance this portfolio for the best and optimum results. So, although we have done about 150 crores last year, we will either match it or be a little less than that. <clears throat> That's my expectation. The, as far as the uh, CPC SM business is concerned, we are majorly focusing on growth in that particular shape. That's how it's going to pan. Okay. Uh, sir, on the energy efficiency projects, uh, how much has your efficiency improved by in terms of cal per metric ton? Sir, I can say that uh, the expectation in the first plant was uh, roughly about 3% to 3%. That has actually been a little better. That is better by about 45 to, uh, 45 to 50%. In plant 2, it is about 20% uh, uh, better than what we had assumed earlier. It was about the expectation was that it would deliver about 1.5%, uh, but we will do 20% better than that. Okay. And sir, for uh, FY25, what would be the CAPEX plan? 
Uh, there are the there are two or two types. One is routine maintenance capex, and one that we will uh, do f uh, ordering for the new energy saving project. My expectation is about 360 crores. And bifurcating between uh, maintenance efficiency and tan. Tan, of course, this is not uh, what I told you was not tan. Tan is separate. The tan is about uh, 700, crore. 700 crore additional. And uh, as far as in this, in the 360 crores, uh, roughly 40, 50 crores would be the ordering amount. And that balance will be uh, refinancing maintenance or not. Okay. Sir, any update on nitric acid value chain projects that you are evaluating? Yeah, we are going in for a detailed cost evaluation on concentrated nitric acid, uh, which will be ordered on one of the major licensors. That has been approved. Okay. Uh, thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, ladies and gentlemen, you may press star to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Harmish Desai from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Good morning, and thank you for taking my question. Sorry to interrupt, uh, Mr. Desai. May I, may I request you to use your handset so your audio is muffled? Proper now? No, sir. It's still the same, sir. Uh, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it better now? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, so, as I was saying, uh, my first question is, uh, just wanted to ask. In Q3 and Q4, we saw uh, the BAP sales number going uh, very was going very low. So do we expect the same rapid to continue in FI25 as well, whether will, uh, you know, uh, and because the subsidy is also decreased. So do we expect the same to continue in FI25, less DAP sales? I, if I get you right, you are asking whether the DAP sales? That That is right, sir, yes. Uh, so essentially DAP currently with the fixed MRP regime that is there uh, was not really very viable. So we have uh, uh, not concluded many contracts there. In any case, quarter four, we really don't have much sale. So the sale actually begins in quarter one, that is uh, going up to quarter one and quarter two. So uh, there has been a softening in prices internationally, and some things are coming in rate. So we will see and do uh, as and take it as it comes. We have already contracted about 60,000 tons of DAP. Got it. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, and uh, just wanted to get an update on, so Coal India announced this uh, uh, coal gasification project under which, you know, tapped with BHL, they're going to manufacture uh, 2,000 tons of uh, ammonium nitrate on a daily basis. So is it going to be a threat to our project, which we are coming up, the time project? <laughs> No, I have not really. It was the background growth is about 6% as I understand CAGR. We are already at a million tons plus. It means that every year 600,000 tons is being added and the continued emphasis on infrastructure means we need more steel, we need more coal, we need more iron. So this uh, mining activities will further increase. So we are quite confident that the market will absorb uh, these quantities. Understood. Uh, and sir, uh, this nano phosphorus uh, that we have launched, can you provide uh, some details on it? Uh, you know, what do you expect the market size? Is it our own patent? Any updates on that? Uh, could you repeat the question? I'm not very clear. Are you talking about the new biologicals that we have launched? Uh, nano phosphorus. Nano phosphorus. Yeah, yeah. I will. I will ask Mr. Ashish Srivastava to brief. Okay. So uh, uh, this is the product which we have launched is, is, a, is a nano phosphorus which is other than the nano available in the ecosystem. This is the only product which, which is derived through a biological route. So and uh, the research trial shows that there can be reduction in DAP consumption. We are not claiming anything. 
but there can be a significant growth in this segment. Uh, putting some numbers on the table will be difficult as of now. We are launching the product in a week's time uh, and targeting around uh, uh, 5 lakh uh, acres uh, in Kharif. Okay, okay. And uh, any pricing, pricing of the product? How is that priced? See, the uh, present uh, DA, nano DAP which are available in the market are 500 ml bottles and they are uh, priced at an MRP of around 600. But ours is a biological product and uh, it's in 250 ml bottle. So the price would be comparable to the, to the, uh, in the ecosystem. I cannot spell out the exact number as of now. Understood, sir. Uh, and lastly, you. if you can provide me the uh, bifurcation between G1, G2 and G3 and the gas prices for uh, this quarter? Gas prices for this quarter was uh, around $17 <coughs> per MMBTU on NCU basis. Okay. And uh, the bifurcation between G1, G2 and G3 volume wise? So G1, G2 both has gone through uh, AT, annual ATR, so the uh, utilization will be lower. However, actual number will let you know separately. Sure, sir. Sure. Done. Yeah. That is it. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. The next question is from the line of Viraj Kacharya from Simple. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. There's a couple of questions. First is on the G1, G2 uh, energy efficiency, which we talked about. So what you said is 20% improvement in plant 2 and 4 to 5% improvement in plant 1. Am I right? No, no, what you are, see, you can't improve energy by 20%, okay? The normal range for improvement in these plants is between 1 to 3%. On any of these projects, not more than 1 to 3%. And it goes in steps because you debottleneck each and every process element as you go, uh, go along. And uh, uh, this is done over a period of, I think, 10 to 15 years. So we have been doing this for Galapan uh, 1 since almost uh, 1995, 96, and for Galapan 2, 2000, 2001. So it is a long journey, and every time the delta is almost 1 to 3 percent. What I said was the improvement that was expected of that, the additional is about 40 percent or 1 to 2 percent. You get my point? So. so so to improvement of 2% over whatever we had in 23-24 and instead of 2% it can be around 2.5-3%. That is what for G1 and say it will be for, uh, 2 point. for G2 then another 20-25% on that. So around 2% 2, 2 on G2. Are okay. you getting this? I understood. What I was trying to ask is, uh, you know, the uh, plant which is under, so both the units are under grouping 3 for NPS. Uh, policy and uh, the policy was supposed to come out with new energy efficiency norms in 2025. Now, yeah. and uh, even in G3, we may be one of the most efficient units, you know, both G1 and G2. But if the units were to come up for the, you know, the energy efficiency targets were to revise a tighten further, and this is a trend we are seeing across industries, uh, you know, government focusing on better energy efficiency. Uh, in addition, uh, would, the, would the savings which we expect for this investment, would that largely offset, you know, any adverse, uh, you know, impact we see, or you still see a positive, uh, you know, outcome for us? This is a matter which, which is uh, not yet, uh, there is a discussion that it will be a discussion in depth with the industry in 2025. As an industry, we have been representing that energy efficiency projects must be encouraged, and that is what has been the stance of the Fertilizer Association of India. As far as Chambal is concerned, we are well below the norms as far as the current norms are concerned for the group in which we belong under NUP 2015 policy. We do not expect any great reduction in the energy uh, revision, even if it were to happen in a frame of 2025-26. Uh, if it will be done, it will be done by some other compensating factors, that is the understanding that we have on the government. So there will be some compensating factor, something somewhere else. 
it will not be a negative net net negative on the uh, uh, on the companies because the government understands that the urea industry is a very fine industry asset which has been created over a period of roughly 40 years through various policy interventions and it is vital to the food security of the nation you must understand that out of the uh, out of the 3.2 crore or 320 lakh metric ton of urea that is produced almost currently 90% is indigenous after the coming in of the new plants and the growth underlying growth of uh, urea is between 1.5 to 2% cagr which means that every year you add about 600000 700000 tons of consumption uh, that is because as we uh, increase the irrigation penetration in various other hinterlands and uh, with advanced uh, practices for farming the use of fertilizer is going up and with the focus on maize biofuels and so on this will further go up so the government will have to keep a certain percentage of domestic production running and uh, otherwise we will be totally focused on the vagaries of the import market that is very well understood inside the uh, government circle so i don't think that even if they did something with the i'm just saying even if they did something with the energy efficiency norm there will be some other compensating uh, policy interventions and the second question was you know the way the prices are for um, gas prices ammonia and even the input commodity prices for india uh, how should we understand spreads uh, for us in 25 for the urea manufacturers see as far as the uh, nup 2015 units are concerned and even nip 2012 units are concerned there is a cost plus formula which operates so the spreads are protected uh, given what the formulation in the policy is concerned it is only when you go beyond the reassess capacity that there is a uh, high kind of comparison with the international import parity prices there could be uh, i would say uh, times when this is uh, very low or Uh, could be negative for some units with high energy costs but overall the industry has been managing uh, and in any case even in the old policy there was a cap on the maximum that you would get uh, on the import parity parity that is something of the order of uh, 1635 or some 2020 or dollars so uh, that's not a very great number in any case however in case there is a complete upturn in the uh, urea price going down to some 280 to 290 level definitely many parts of the industry will have to uh, relook at their production plans and i'm sure that the government is cognizant of that this is a continuous dialogue that takes place between the industry and the government on this issue and they can as per policy make some adjustments okay so for 25 as a whole you know if i look at comparison to 24 With the way the prices are right now, uh, and considering the energy savings which we would expect to kick in from 25 or 1 and 2, would it be right to think that the spreads which we earn on the on a full year basis would by and large be similar? No, it will increase. You see, please understand that when we talk energy efficiency, we are actually talking of lowering the consumption of gas per ton of uh, urea, and. Uh, you can make an assumption that look we reduce about roughly uh, assuming that we are, the norm says that we are using 5.5 gcal of energy for nup uh, 2015 units and as per norm is around 5 gcal per ton for uh, nup 2012 units the total quantum of gas that we purchase for this uh, operation is of the order of uh something like uh, 15 million gk which is roughly about 60 million mm btus so if 1 or 2% saving is there translates into a big number and that adds directly to the bottom line okay uh i just have few more questions i'll come back in so thank you thank you
Before we take the next question, a reminder to all participants, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. The next question is for the line of Rohan Gupta from Nuwama. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good morning. <coughs> morning. Sir, uh, sir, first question is on uh, our uh, Gadepan 3. Uh, sir, I think that uh, this plant is under review in terms of the policies in uh, FI 25-26. Uh, what is the expectation in terms of the profitability portion as far as the GC is concerned, sir? No, no. First of all, it is not under review in 25-26. It will be under review only in 26-27. Okay. FY27, you are saying? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, sir, how you see that the policy changes will be having impact on the profitability on this plant? I mean, it will be brought down in the, under the current system. Anybody's guess. Anybody's guess. There are so many things floating around uh, from the control of urea to uh, open pricing, MRP. I don't know what the government... There is. Let's wait for the first 100 days and then we will talk about this. <coughs> okay. Uh, Sir, in terms of uh, that uh, uh, our future plan as far as the Zia business is concerned, I think that our existing site is fully utilized in terms of the land utilization. If you see that if there is any uh, change in policy from the government, however, we see that India has already achieved almost self sufficiency as far as the UDI is concerned with the recent uh, uh, increase in uh, manufacturing capacity of Uriya by multiple players. So, do you see that going forward you will have for the plan to increase the capacities, uh, uh, if there is any changes or tinkering in the government policies as far as the is concerned. See, Rohan, some time back, our people have put up a paper to the government informally, and our calculations show that we will again start swinging back into negative from 28, 29 uh, onwards. We are, as it is, a negative. But the way it is that with six, uh, six, seven lakh tons increase million, million tons. in the uh, consumption every year, the way it is going, we will be again uh, <coughs> in a kind of a imported situation by 28, 29, at least, but at least three and a half to four million tons, of five million tons. Above whatever exactly today it is, even last year we have imported so I'll just uh, add, Rohan, you know, uh, see, uh, this uh, question of self-sufficiency in urea is still a, is a long, long uh, uh, thing. If you, if you look at the number, 6.2 million tons of imported urea was sold in our country last year. And if you look at the CAGR of urea, it's going at around, roughly around 2%. So, uh, uh, at least, only one more plant yet to be commissioned, that's culture, which will take another two and a half, three years which is, say, 1 million tons. So still still a lot of gap uh, in, in sir, urea. My question, sir, my question was that will you be willing to put a urea plant going forward if there is any tinkering in the government policy? Well, that is a hypothetical question, and uh, we have to see. Uh, let me also point out that there are possibilities of putting up it in our own complex, uh, which uh, we have. There are possibilities. Technically, there is, it is possible. When and how we will uh, do that is uh, is dependent on what conversations we have with the government. As I have said, we have had uh, put up a paper, uh, not from the point of view of anything else except to apprise them that going in 28-29 time frame, we will need at least two to three plants to supplement the supply of urea. That's our assessment. What the government does is between the NITI IO, Planning Commission, uh, government uh, policy makers, that we don't know, but uh, it, uh, according to us, the writing is very clear on the wall. Uh, sir, second question is on our uh, reporting, so thanks a lot for uh, uh, giving the segmental reporting, which really makes it very easy to read the numbers. Sir, there in terms of the uh, the own manufacturer fertilizer profitability EBIT has fallen down significantly from 23 to 24, uh, from 1900 to 1500 crores. It is primarily related to what, I mean, Garepan 3 plant, right? Uh, and, and why it would have fallen so much? No, no, you must understand that there has been a swing of almost 1.8 lakh tons in sales last year to this year. 
and the it is in one of the plants which has a higher contribution. So that makes the difference. So it's an additional volume of 1.8 lakh ton on a Gadipan tree plant. Not not exactly Gadipan tree. It will be I think half and half. Okay, but the profitability difference will be only in a Gadipan tree versus uh, because that is the only plant where we have a higher under the higher profit margin pattern, right? Because earlier plant I mean G1, G2 no. are still under the old regime, right? So, uh, Rohan, it's not only urea. We also manufacture some surplus ammonia. And this current, and okay. last year, there were very high margins in ammonia. This year, the ammonia margins have come back to normal. So, there will be a gap, substantial gap into that. And please also understand that we had a shutdown in all the plants in the current year. So, that okay. also takes our expenses higher. So, overall, if you see, then it culminates into the number which it is there. Okay, got okay. it. So, just last question for my side, I'll come back to you. So on CPC and SN business, we, we have a pretty decent margin. At EBIT margins are roughly at close to 19 to 20 percent, which is pretty high, given that the industry standard. However, we don't have any. I mean, uh, I mean, it is still for us is a branding and trading business. Uh, uh, you see that uh, this kind of margin, I mean, 19 to 20 percent. Uh, how it is for? I mean, we are able to achieve those margins, and uh, do you see that these margins are going to sustain in uh, our uh, business? I will yeah. let Mr. Uh, Ashish Shivastav, yeah, Rohan, uh, coordinator of this yeah, yeah. business. Okay. Of this question. Okay. So, Rohan, uh, a good question, you know, but uh, but this the margins are culminating from the the pricing price positioning of the products, you know, which we started initially. So we targeted the MNCs uh, with regards to positioning or price positioning of the product. That's why the high and we these are sustainable at least at least for a couple of years. And we are not competing with uh, Indian manufacturers as term of, in terms of MRPs in price positioning. So that is one of the reasons. So uh, it is sustainable. And you are saying it is across, including CPC as well as in SN. Your SN is roughly 30% of the revenue. So it's not only yeah, because skewed, it's not skewed toward SN. It's uh, across the CPC as well as SN. It is across. Yeah. And, you know, specialty nutrients, you know, we have, we had the first mover's advantage in the sulfur, bentonite sulfur business which gives us, and the product is sourced from a very uh, uh, efficient supplier from Saudi Arabia. So the best product in that segment, that's why uh, the best price positioning. And in terms of asset allocation, it is still very small towards this business, right? Because we don't have any uh, backward integrated manufacturing plant as far as CPC is concerned. I think that most part of our, our portfolio here is a trading or uh, outsourcing model. So because uh, that is likely to remain in this way or you plan to invest significantly going forward in CTC manufacturing or, or in that segment. So, Rohan, anything is on the table. See, the point is this, that uh, there is two ways of looking at it. One is to <coughs> focus on certain lines in the in CPC business, which we don't think is very wise. We have a open portfolio approach, which means that it could be a combination going forward that we will continue to do what we are doing, but we may get into one, one or two specific lines. Uh, that depends on what we think are the future growth options, but there, because it will be an asset allocation, we have to carefully think through the uh, five, six years, seven years uh, product profile, uh, you know, movement, how it will move and what it will do. So one of the things that we are doing in order to get more uh, depth in the business is to start talking strategically to many, uh, you know, reputed manufacturers, Japanese and so on. And we are starting to get a feel as to what this business or this research-based stuff or the uh, Gen 1 molecule actually means. And as we grow in that, I think this will be the first year when we are introducing certain Gen 1 uh, stuff. And once we have a one, one and a half year experience down the line, definitely our thoughts could change in terms of what we would try and do uh, in terms of the open portfolio approach. We could mix in some amount of uh, uh, asset allocation towards that, uh, if you will. That's what our response in this matter is. Uh, so thanks, sir. And if uh, I'm allowed for the one more last question from my side, uh, especially on our DAP and complex fertilizer trading. Uh, sir, uh, last year has not been so great, but uh, even recent, uh, in the current scenario also, the DAP prices are quite 
muted in the global market, but so as in the in the domestic markets as well. Just wanted to understand what will be your strategy in the current year as far as the DSC trading is concerned. That's one. And second, the recent government paper has proposed that you know up to the 12% kind of margins are allowed for the completely backward integrated manufacturer for complex fertilizer and DAP. In that sense, and in under that policy, do you see that still trading makes sense, or in future you may be looking forward for backward integration, integrating your business in that also? So let me tell you that uh, at the moment uh, we do not have any plans for getting into this. But I am happy to tell you that in our joint venture in Emirates, we are strongly uh, evaluating <laughs> an expansion of the order of 55 to 60 percent of the existing capacity for for phosphoric acid. And should that uh, number on basis of valuation come close to what uh, the uh, management thinks, definitely there will be uh, an investment in that particular line. So that is one thing. As far as uh, the uh, DAP and NPK strategy is concerned, as I told you, most of our markets are served by uh, DAP products, uh, DAP basically. However, we have uh, territorially, uh, you know, demarcated certain areas where we could get in with NPK, and that NPK we have already placed almost a lack of tons we have already placed. So let's see how that goes, and uh, if that uh, if we get uh, continuing traction in that, we we'll definitely pursue that. I also hope that uh, the government uh, relooks, uh, it's a wish, of course, at the current way <coughs> the NBS is being run. Should it return back to its uh, original format, I'm sure uh, Chambal will not be found wanting in crossing a million tons in a very short period of time. That's very helpful, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dhruv Muchal from HDFC AMC. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you so much. Sir, possible to share what was the ammonia profit uh, or savings last year and what is it current year? It is half. Less than half. Yeah, but in absolute amount, sir. <laughs> I will ask uh, Anand to ask the question. So last year <coughs> we made around um, 125 crores. This year we have made less than 50 crores. Yeah, this is for the full year, right? Yeah. Okay. So, but uh, the decline in uh, the urea business profit, uh, which is for the full year basis, is about uh, one second. It's about I think 400 odd crores. So, uh, yeah, about 400 odd crores. Uh, so, about 100 comes from this ammonia, but the rest is because of the shutdown that you have taken, is it? Same so, uh, uh, yeah, some some is from shutdown, some is from lower sale of urea on a combined basis for all the three plants. So there will be a blended number. Okay. Okay. So, but still the decline then seems a bit large. Probably, okay, I'll try to understand it offline. Uh, so the second question is on the uh, efficiency measures, the savings because of the efficiency measures. I, I mean, a, a simple way, I'm just trying to understand a simple way to, un, uh, you know, uh, calculate it. Uh, would it be fair to say 1-2% of a material consume cost, uh, probably some percentage of a material consume cost would be a fair way to understand the benefit from efficiency savings? Yes. Yes. Because a large part of your material consumed would be gas, so uh, yes. ex ex excluding the uh, trip purchased uh, thing. So yes. one two percent of that would be and efficiency savings. Yeah, I'll put it this way: as I told you, we are consuming roughly about 15 million gcal, which works out to almost 60 million mmbtu. One mmbtu costs currently, let's say, ballpark 17 dollars. Hmm. One or two percent saving there is a big number. Got it, got it, got it. But this is only for your plant one and two, not for three. No, three, we haven't done any energy efficiency, but yeah. we can optimize. Uh, see, this is, as it is, one of the most efficient plants in the world. Please understand that there is, uh, there are two parts to it. One is by design and one is by operation. What we have got by design is given. 
and we are actually exceeding what the design parameters are, whatever the guaranteed figures are, we are below that. If you have to go further below that, we have to do some other things which has to be seen in the context of the policy parameters that we do because we have to always compare it with the marginal ton that we produce. The marginal ton is much less uh, profitable than the actual ton. However, efficiency projects uh, work on the entire production. So we have to see in the context of gas prices and the costs and then the technical feasibility. These studies normally take, have a cycle time of one to one and a half years. And then there's an implementation time of uh, one and a half years more because you have to catch up with the next uh, turnaround. So it is a three year period in which you start initiate studies and then you come to a conclusion, then you order that equipment, then you install that equipment and so on. So this is how it goes on and therefore there is a, a, a glide path to achieving the numbers. So uh, I would say that upon three, we are very close to maybe the possibly one of the lowest numbers in the world as far as uh, efficiency of producing UVI is concerned. I'm not saying there is no further scope, but uh, there is there is a study of studies are always ongoing on these issues. As far as Gadipan 1 and 2 are concerned, we had the options and we have made those uh, changes. Uh, and those changes have started yielding results. Gotcha. So just uh, my also point was on computation purposes. So when you mentioned 15 million GKL or 60 MMBTU, that's on the all three plants. So uh, what savings we are deriving is for plant one and two, for, just for the consumption of uh, gas and plant one and two, right? Nah, yeah, but that what I told you was the three plants, actually all the three plants, because I am taking about 3 million tons of uh, plus production. So, mm -hmm. but if you are looking at plant one and two, then the uh, numbers are slightly four five percent higher because we are not at five levels. We are uh, four five percent higher higher than that. So they they will be a little bit more proportionately gas consumed in the plant one and two. Got it. That's uh, very helpful, sir. Thank you so much for all this. Thanks. Thank you. A reminder to all participants: you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Himanshu Binani from Anand Rati. Please go ahead. Um, sir, hi, and thank you for taking my question. So, sir, my first question was largely on the inventory position. So, maybe if you can, like, comment on the inventory position, both the area and the non area for the company, as well as maybe any sense on the industry. So I'll ask uh, Ashish to answer that question. Okay, so uh, uh, Himanshu, this the current inventory as on 1st of April of urea in the country was around uh, around 60, uh, 87 lakh tons. Uh, and, uh, 87. Uh, 87 lakh tons. And DAP was around uh, 22 lakh tons. NPK is 47 lakh tons. And uh, MOP 9 lakh tons. This is country, country inventory. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look at our inventories, it would be our, our inventories would be around eight percent of the country in urea, and very uh, almost negligible in DAP. Okay, okay, got it. And sir, um, now we have like we have like seen a decent amount of time in terms of the nanotechnology. So maybe if you are in a position basically to comment in terms of the volumes for the nanotechnology, maybe in UE as well as in DAP, what has been the volume number and maybe any sense on the industry will be helpful. Okay, so uh, so Himanshu, this uh, nano uh, UE I will not like to comment, you know, because there is only one product in the market. Uh, it would it would not be proper to uh, for me to comment. As far as phosphorus uh, is concerned, nano two nano DAPs along with the nano phosphorus of Chambal have just been launched, uh, which would be hitting the market for the first time. Now I can't comment on the nano DAP of other competitors, but we are targeting almost five lakh acres of a treated area of nano phosphorus in the in the Kharif itself. Uh, other companies' number it's difficult for me to to quote. 
See, Manchu, it is a process of first time usage, then evaluation, then if it, the product has actually delivered, then there will be uh, repeat buy. So one has to understand what is the actual difference on the table that the product makes. If there is a visible difference, the product catches up very fast. If it is not, then uh, the adoption could be slower. So uh, as far as our own uh, field trials are concerned, there have been very positive results. Because of that, we are confident that uh, it will be uptaken by the farmers in uh, great measure or in, in good quantity. But as we have launched it and uh, the first field trials or other application will happen in Kharif, we will really be able to comment only by Kharif. No, by Rabi, sir. So I answer the question, uh, the basic reason basically asking this question was largely if I actually look into some media articles, so we, we have a comment from the ministry that uh, this year, F525, India is likely to have a very negligible amount of like urea imports, number one. Mm -hmm. Secondly, as for your comments that we, we, we had something around the 6 million ton of urea imports last year and the production and the consumption, there is a difference basically. So just wanted to have this sense that how is the volume picking up basically into this segment. So we have been, the, the government has been like thumping on this great uh, big time, but then so we, we are like completely in a black box in terms of the volumes. So how has been the volume shaping up in this segment, both in the nano DAP as well as okay. the nano DAP? So nano, nano phosphorus and DAP, there are no volumes registered so far because the products have just been launched. As far as nano urea is concerned, if you if you look at the urea sales, the 46% filled urea sales, it has gone up uh, over last year in spite of a significant quantity of nano being pushed into the cooperative segment. So I think the answer lies there, and you know it would be difficult for me to comment beyond that. Got it, sir. Got it. I think uh, coming back to my first question, basically on the inventory position. So, sir, in in sense, in terms of the region-wise inventory, how is that positioned, or maybe what is the uh, starting inventory, basically, and any particular region where we have a higher inventory? Uh, you know, you want the state-wise inventories uh, uh, of urea? State-wise color, basically, uh, just just to get a sense in terms of how the inventories are placed. You know, actually, uh, okay, I got your point. It is wi widely spread across across the territory as far as urea is concerned. Uh, mm -hmm. But in case you want state-wise numbers, we can send it to you uh, later on. And as country-wide, we can give you country spread on the, and NPKs. Significant inventories, only uh, product whose inventories are lower and compared to last year is DAP. And, uh, and you know the reasons. Uh, but if you need, need state-wise uh, inventory levels, we can send it to you later. Sure. So whatever data we have. Whatever data we have through our own sources. sources. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. That would be helpful. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Arjun Khanna from Kotak Mahindra Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, so, if you could just help us with uh, how much capex do we expect to? What would be a capital expenditure for FI uh, 25? I think uh, we made two points. One is about 360 crores of ongoing capex. Uh, that is maintenance plus efficiency projects. As far as urea plants are concerned and about 700 crores for tax. Total about 1,060, give or take 1,100, 1,150. Sure. Uh, and uh, you also mentioned Imbasid is looking at uh, increasing capacities by 40-50%. Uh, so uh, uh, would that be funded by its own uh, accruals? We won't have to put in any capital there? You don't have to put there the cash surplus. Though. As and when the board of Imbasid decides, they will... Uh, they have enough cash in there. Sure. Uh, and in terms of profitability, do we expect, so when do we expect the profits from Masset to uh, consequently improve given the CAPEX? No, see the point, obviously the CAPEX will be done, then there is a payback, uh, isn't it? Sure. So, huh, so what is the 
game in uh, uh, Imasid is that the capacity expansion comes at a significantly lower per ton cost as compared to a, a green field or even a brown field. So sure. that is where the that is where the benefit is. Sure. They have found a combination by which they can uh, by adding uh, some sulfuric acid plant and so on. They are able to expand the capacity at much lower capital cost per ton. Sure. Uh, sir, just on the energy saving for urea, we had mentioned that 350, 380 crores. Uh, <coughs> essentially, uh, that would be done, uh, and we had mentioned payback in uh, of 100 crores uh, uh, additional profits uh, per year. So, are we on track for the same, given uh, where the market is? No, Arjun, I think you have missed what I have said. When we have, uh, if you see our past presentations, Right. Those are flowing over a period of time. They are not completed at the moment. It happens like this. If you develop a scheme, the scheme is proven on technical grounds. A guarantee is given by the uh, various uh, suppliers. Then you go to the board. Then the board approves it. Then you order the equipment. So as I said, that's about a three-year cycle, one and, one and a half years to develop and one and a half years to uh, implement. Then the 400 odd crores, I think that we have mentioned in a in a period of three years. Last, so of that, about 130, 140 crores is the fresh one that has been ordered. 180 has been already done. That is how it is going. You get my point. As far as the 360 crores is concerned, part of it for this year is basically replacement capex. Okay, sure. Uh, is, I, I, I get that now. Sure. Sure, that's it for my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mani Khantandare from Franklin Templeton, India. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity. Hope I'm audible. Yes, yes, you are, but slightly muffled. Could you speak uh, into the phone, please? Any yes, question? Uh, I have a little bit of uh, headset issue. If it is okay, I'll uh, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Jim, the first question is wanted to understand. I wanted uh, if you can give me uh, the G1, G2 uh, plants, uh, FI24 and uh, GCAL members. Is that possible? No. Normally, we don't reveal that, uh, uh, but it is significantly lower than the norm. I, I can only say that. And the after the expansion, it is still better. After the uh, Energy implement project implementation is still there. Okay, and uh, for the G3 plant, uh, like you have commented earlier, uh, uh, for one of the questions, uh, it's very close to the uh, possibly the lowest number that is out there. So, uh, so is it fair to assume that uh, for the next three to four years uh, we will not see any change in the GCAL uh, uh, number for G3? See, that will depend on one or two uh, teams that we are pursuing, which is uh, more to work on the ammonia side. But that uh, is subject to many uh, considerations. We are talking to uh, uh, the licensors. The study is on. Once the study is completed, we will know exactly what are the things that they are suggesting by which uh, the ammonia production could be increased and therefore there will be a, you know, decrease in the energy. But that is something uh, I can't really commit or comment at right this point because the energy, uh, the scheme is under is under study and uh, discussion as far as that is concerned. Yes, sir. Like you pointed out earlier, uh, the entire process itself takes three years. So. If uh, you have just started uh, discussing on that, uh, then it's fair to assume that uh, for the next three years at least we will not see any change in uh, GCAL, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the second question is uh, on, the, on your uh, nano phosphorus uh, launch, uh, which is a biological uh, uh, based launch which you have mentioned. Wanted to understand, uh, is it, uh, because it's a biological-based uh, product, uh, is it uh, uh, relatively 
uh, easier or difficult to scale this product? Uh, I, I, I would assume that it is uh, relatively difficult to scale this product versus a chemical based process. Uh, any thoughts out there uh, uh, that would be helpful? You mean scaling of the production of this product? Yes. No, it's, it's not difficult because uh, the phosphorus is, you know, taken out from the low-grade rock phosphorus, uh, phosphorus through a biological process. So there is an abundant uh, raw material available uh, to take that. So there is no problem in scaling that up. To 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 set your mind at rest, this can go. We can scale it up to 2x or 2.5x in about six to seven months' time. Understood. Understood. Right. The third question is on uh, the massive side. Uh, sorry, I just wanted to confirm. You said uh, the expansion is on uh, phos rock or phos acid uh, capacity. No, no. It is conversion of phos rock to phos acid. And as I said, this is something that is being conducted as we speak by the licensors in Morocco. And they are due to report this matter in about two to three months, whereby after that, the board should take a decision. Okay, understood. And uh, last question on uh, on your uh, uh, urea sales volumes versus production. I was just looking uh, if I have to, you know, see the sales volume as a percentage of the production. For FI24, it is 96%. For, uh, for the last three years, it, it was above 100%. How should I think about this? Uh, because, you know, if I look at uh, your sales volume as a percentage of the industry sales, the market share seems to be falling only, you know. Uh, in Q1, I see 10.6. In Q4, I see 7.2. Even if I have to see uh, whatever basis also, Q4 last year was 7.9. So, uh, if you can just uh, give some color on uh, uh, how should I think about this uh, market share at the moment here. So, let me just tell you that these plants are designed tight for production that is called a stream day production. Let us say uh, we have got Gadepan 1, that is unit 1. Assuming that we are operating it at 3100 tons per day. Then the way I can increase production is that I should run it flat out 365 days a year. If I don't operate it uh, that many number of days, but 10, if I reduce by 10%, then there will be a reduction in production accordingly. Now, in a year when you have a turnaround, which is basically once in two years, you lose about 28, 29 days of production, plus any trips and shutdowns that you may have unplanned and so on. So that is as far as the production capacity is concerned. So for most of the plants in, the, in India and everywhere in the world, these run flat out on full capacity, otherwise you don't get the energy efficiency a guaranteed parameters. However, when you are saying there is a uh, reduction in uh, market share, that is because there have been two plants which have come. Uh, from, uh, last year we had uh, Gorakhpur coming in, and this year we have Sindri and Baroni coming in from HUR. So the net supply has increased from the production. Therefore, there will be uh, a total overall percentage decline. However, what is more important is in the areas that we serve, are we in the areas, in the areas that we serve in those states that we are, have our uh, market share fallen? Not by very much. Very clear. So thank you. But uh, just uh, on the question about uh, Sales as a percentage of the production, uh, which has dropped to 96% uh, on a whole, uh, full year basis for FI24 versus uh, around 103% for FI23. Uh, any color there? I will ask uh, Ashish. That, uh, yeah, could you finish your question, please? I thought what you are trying to say is this year, 23-24, we are 96%. Okay. Yeah, the sales as a percentage of the production was 96%. Uh, versus one zero three percent. So last year we carried some stock on the opening, which was also sold, and the production that was made that was also sold. This year we carried very little stock in the opening, and the we carried some stock into uh, twenty four twenty five. So there is a negative uh, 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 variation on the sales as you are rightly pointing out. Okay, so it's all related to inventory related variations only. Yeah, yeah, please, please. that's it. 
Understood. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for asking my question. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Manish Mahavar from Antique Stockbroking. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. My first question in terms of energy efficiency, uh, it, uh, if you look at uh, G1, G2, uh, two and a half to three percent of efficiency improvement, right? Uh, it, for simplification, just wanted to understand, uh, right now, if you pay urea a bit of around maybe 15 dollars, it this energy efficiency will add around eight to ten percent of the additional a bit to the business. I mean, let's put it this way. Uh, we get uh, around forty forty one dollars per ton average, right? So, uh, so two percent to three percent increase is about two to three dollars, three four dollars. You are right. It is eight to eight to nine percent is okay. It also depends upon the gas prices yeah. and you you know, seventeen dollars of gas cost. That's what I'm talking about. Seventeen dollars of gas cost. Roughly, okay. And uh, in terms of uh, when you said, uh, uh, I think one of the comment you made in the call, right? Board has also approved an efficiency program of 120 odd crores, right? Uh, which is over and above what we have done in the last year. Yes. That's right. So, what? How much of improvement can happen after this 120 odd crores spending? <laughs> See, obviously, these are all projects which are developed between. Four to five years payback. We don't go beyond five years payback. Okay, but what is the uh, energy efficiency percentage? Uh, what you said is two and a half to three percent last year. So this one twenty odd crores. So Manish, you will have to talk offline with. Sure, sir. No worry. And uh, sir, right now And energy G one, G two, G three. Uh, what is the difference? Uh, basically, the, I wanted to understand how efficient G three versus G one, G two in terms of energy efficiency. So, as we told that you know G G three has a much better efficiency compared to G one, G two. It's a newer plant, and it's one of the best efficient plants you know in the, around the world. So, yeah, it 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 is better because in any case, our normative is five, so it is below five. And as Mr. Bajal also uh, explained that for G1, G2, it is still above five. So, but yeah. much below the norm of five point. Uh, and and much below the norm, which is five point five for us. Okay, but still there is a gap. G1, G2 versus G3 is a fifteen twenty percent gap for the energy efficiency norms. Still, yes. or no? No, no, not fifteen twenty percent. Fifteen twenty percent is a huge number. Okay, understood. Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's uh, second question, sir. In terms of AKM business, CP business, uh, basically you have guided for 750 odd crores of revenue by FY27. It will be around 1750 with the bit of 300 odd crores, right? So this is only a domestic business we are talking about. We are not looking out for any export at the moment, right? Because it will be a lot change. What I understand. So Manish, that can only be possible if we put our plants to uh, produce. Uh, this is purely domestic oriented uh, number, and uh, all quite confident with the growth path that we have, 24 to 25, we will be achieving that number. What we have expected. But that uh, that is pure domestic business, right? Sir, we are talking about. Yes, pure, yeah, it's pure domestic. It's only a B2C business, no B2B, no exports in this Manish. Understood. Okay, and uh, if we we go ahead with wanted to go ahead with the export, we have to set up a manufacturing within that time frame. Which is yeah, uh, without okay. with, without uh, your own uh, technical plant or a formulation unit, you cannot export. Difficulty to get inside. Okay, and just one more clarity for in terms of AKM business. Right now, we are uh, basically it's a branding business, right? Because we are not doing some tech, sourcing a technical and formulating some with the third parties. It's a pure for repackaging and the branding business for us at the moment. That's the right understanding. But Manish, Manish, please understand that we have an open portfolio model. Uh, we carefully examine the crop, the season, the pest, <coughs> and we have got a methodology by which we can focus on those to get to the differentiating products that are there in the market. Some are to be applied early. Some are prophylactics. Uh, some are uh, late stage when infestation takes place. We have our eyes very tight, uh, really focused on these issues, 
and that is how we have been able to create pathways by which we have been able to grow and source the material plus now that we have got this santulit portion abhiyan going we are now entering into a cycle of testing evaluating and then entering and i made the point about biologicals this is an area that excites us where we are collaborating with some research institutes to get some products and obviously everything will not succeed but should that succeed then definitely we will create more pipelines in those lines and i must also mention that seed is a business that we are very very focused upon and we will be looking at entering it in uh, also in a big way uh, which we will announce later okay understood okay understood sir and the uh, last point sir uh, by also i think you commented uh, just wait for a first 100 days right uh, in one of the questions uh, answer asking one of the participants so there are two parts i wanted to understand one is a dpt and d control right so how do you see the government intent or infra preparedness in terms of these two things okay manish so the government is thinking of doing some pilots on the dct front instead of direct benefit transfer they are talking of direct cash transfers in some pilot territories which would happen in the next year upon the success of that the dbt might get shifted to dct we can't comment on that and uh, as far as your question on decontrol is concerned uh, government is evaluating all things whether they are talking of rationalization of mrps whether it means decontrol to you or me we can't say they are say, talking of rationalization of mrps let's see what shape and color it takes manish it is uh, we have not uh, we are not very privy to what is going on but we do do understand that lot of work has been done internally inside the ministry and various ideas and proposals are being forwarded and being uh, discussed back and forth uh, what exactly it will come is that uh, we do not know but the government wants to relook at this sector and uh, uh, decrease the uh, amount of subsidies that have to be paid that is one of the general purposes by which they want to do something in, the, in this in this area so that could mean anything i mean could mean many many but how it will pan out i don't know whatever action will be taken basically that it will lead to a rise in the urea domestic prices which is a farmer prices right so ultimately i have no idea i have no idea it's very very premature for us to come and comment on these issues i think sure sure no issue sure, sir and maybe can i ask one more question sir please yes please Yeah, so sir, in terms of four Q, uh, if you look at a bit of the urea business, right? Uh, you already mentioned, right? The shutdown uh, of the, one of the reason, and uh, I think so soft profit of your ammonia business. There is also, I think, IPP link the volume will be lower this year, and also lower urea price will affect this four Q numbers. That is also right or no? Yeah, right. There will there is a element of reduction in the only uh, contribution for beyond hundred percent. that it also the top of that and the prices yeah uh, you, uh, i couldn't catch you could you repeat that please? so basically the ipp volume will be lower last versus last in the 4q as well as ipp prices will be lower right both the sides will be lower in the 4q so ipp volume ipp volume is more or less similar but ipp prices are the contribution as i said is low will be lower okay for sure under social that's from my side and all the best sir thank you thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen that was the last question i now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments uh thank you very much gentlemen for uh, having a patient uh, hearing to what we had to say i hope we have answered most of the questions and i also hope that the increased transparency in the uh, publication results has enlightened you more about chambal and we look forward to your uh, continuing this journey as investors with us thank you very much thank you on behalf of chambal fertilizers and chemicals that concludes the conference call thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines thank you thank you, thank you.